Okay. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, our last section is on the medication therapy management use case that's used within Scanner. Uh, the presentation will be presented by Dr. Grace Quo. Dr. Quo is a pharmacist health services researcher. Her research focuses on medication safety and pharmacy practice through practice-based research networks. Her funded projects include studying the effects of electronic medical records on medication safety, assessing patients' health literacy, evaluating medication reconciliation practice and medication error reports, and implementing a national pharmacogenomics education program. Uh, she's a co-investigator on the scanner project. She's a co-lead of the um, medication surveillance therapy, uh, medication surveillance CER that was in the previous section, and she's the lead of the medication therapy management study. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you all for being here. Uh, this is the progress that we have made so far. So for the scanner project, we wanted to have a demonstration project component that had comparative effective research with it. Just about the same time here at UCSD, we started a few of the CER-related demonstration projects too, with pharmacists and physicians collaborative uh, management in the clinic setting. For both hypertension and diabetes, both are very prevalent in primary care settings as well as specialty care settings. This collaborative management model um, is really fairly new and it has a new attention on the national scale of uh, home, the medical home concept. But here in house at UCSD, we also put special emphasis on quality improvement with these uh, specific indicators related to cardiovascular disease, including hypertension and diabetes. Here within San Diego, we have a San Diego Pharmacist Resource and Research Network, SD PharmNet. We also have both of these hypertension and diabetes, especially with pharmacists and physicians co-management roles in high uh, priority. Here in California, there's a California Right Care initiative where the Department of Managed Health Care is also regrouping with a group of health insurance companies, with pharmacists, with physicians, allied health um, nurses to figure out how to manage these conditions better. And so there's a lot of traction that we have not only here in-house, but in the uh, San Diego region, in California, and the nation. With medication therapy management specifically, we figured that um, a lot of the, the care would be very similar and overlapping, however, because of the healthcare delivery changes including some of the documentations in the electronic medical records being probably added, that this will be a good demonstration project. With hypertension at UCSD, we have three different projects. One is called the GO project funded by the NHLBI at the NIH. The other one is Caption Project um, that's also funded by the NHLBI. Then we have in our clinics, in pri two primary care family medicine clinics, where we actually have pharmacists and physicians co-manage patients with hypertension and diabetes. So in the future for Scanner Project, we do want to expand outside of the UCSD, but we wanted to have some experience here in-house first. I think it's important for us to keep in mind that Scanner is actually not designing new projects for these uh, in these projects or in, at these sites. Rather, it is... Um, connecting with the different healthcare delivery settings using the different uh, parameters from the data variable per point of view uh, to have a secure infrastructure that would capture data and share data and um, with the cl clinical decision tools. The study designed for this part of MTM and the scanner project is pretty straightforward. So for the hypertension as well as the diabetes uh, studies, we have uh, two arms in each. We have the physicians and pharmacists um, with a target enrollment goal of 100 patients, and the physician alone, um, that's their, we call usual care, except that at UCSD, we actually have a pretty vigorous quality improvement initiative going on with or without pharmacists. And so the same um, design in diabetes. The next couple of slides are going to be very busy. I just wanted to, you to have a big picture view, uh, like what we started out to do. And so with uh, the, either hypertension and or diabetes, we wanted to know what data we needed to capture. So we went to um, what we call our dream list first. So the dream list was compiled by um, some of our PharmD students. We looked into not just those three studies uh, or three different projects here in-house. We also went to the published literature to see what some of the data variables were capturing. So part of, I think, the labs, the uh, vital signs, um, the sort of um, 
history of present illness diagnoses are already in the EMR. And for those of you who sit close enough who may be able to read, uh, we also wanted to capture medication list. But more importantly, since this is an MTM demonstration project, we wanted to know if some of these medication changes that were documented in, the, um, in our EMR could be captured or not. Because those programs were written in later on, and it was not part of the uh, sort of physician um, EMR that we're using right now, even though it's, it's all embedded within EPIC. So this is our hypertension uh, var data variable dream list. And then when we kind of analyzed it over a, several, a course of several months, we realized that some in green are retrievable. So those are easily retrievable. When I say easily, I'm sure the informatics programmer had to spend a lot of time. Um, but the red ones, unfortunately, were not retrievable. One of the things, but I thought this is very good discovery, because all these, especially medication therapy management parameters that we thought we had um, written a, a program within EPIC was actually at the end could not be retrieved. Um, as of last week or maybe two weeks ago, what we found was a difference between what they call a smart text versus a smart data element. And because it was the program was initially written as a smart text, it was actually treated as a text even though we had to uh, pull down this. So to us pharmacists, we thought that all those data were captured, but it was actually not easily retrievable at this point. Then we have some hopefuls that we still we are dreaming about. Those are possible um, variables that could be programmed or that we could still go back and retrieve either at the front end or at the, uh, the back end. So then here, for the UCSD, we decided to take that list. We reduced it, and we were still wanting to go through another round. Um, but at this time, for example, billing information um, at this time is not retrievable because it's kept um, in a separate data set than our EPIC um, EMR system. In the future, though, there's plans to integrate. So we're still hopeful. We don't want to delete them from our list at this time. So this is really dynamic um, in process, in progress. So then for diabetes, it was pretty much the same thing. We started out with our dream list of 122 variables. Then we found out some were retrievable, some were not retrievable, some may be hopeful. Then we reduced that down to the UCSD list, and we also found uh, some were greens and reds and blues. That keeps our dreams going. So, so far our progress, very, in, in very brief terms, we were able to identify some, some of these patients. So, for hypertension, we have three different projects going on here, and we actually keep track of those on our own, and because we started doing that anyways for our clinical trials and for our clinic patients. So, so far we've had 147 patients. With the scanner informatics team, we are able to retrieve 112 patients. And one of the possibilities why there's the discrepancy maybe because our IRB issues um, that may be very applicable because so far we were able to get approval for retrospective up to June 15, 2011 um, data. And, but right now, that's, um, the, the patients, 147, were up to, I think, the end of July. And so there may be some discrepancies, but it shouldn't be that big, so we still have to go back to actually compare every single one to see what was missing. And for the diabetes patients, we only have clinic patients and no clinical trials. There were 47 so far, and it's still ongoing, uh, whereas the scanner team is able to identify 31 of these patients. Then for the hypertension control, this is um, very interesting, and it's posing additional research questions to us, which is right now, so far, we have 17 patients because we have not identified controls for um, one of the, the, the GO project as well as for the clinic projects. When we put in some of the conditions that we put in um, here, because here we had the specific names of the pharmacist providers, and so those patients, we were able to narrow them down. Whereas when we said, give us all the patients with the diagnosis of hypertension who has visited these three clinics, then we have over 10,000 patients. So now our question, then researchable question, is how do we go and find the controls? Do we need to match these patients? Do we go with what the clinical trial patients were? And so we're in the midst of um, that dialogue. Then for diabetes, um, it's pretty much the same thing here. It's always good to have more data than not having enough. 
So this is another way of presenting the data. So far for the hypertensive pharmacist and physician group, we were able to identify 112 patients. Out of those patients altogether, they're taking 648 medications at baseline, and this is tracked every quarter, every three months. Of the same 112 patients, they're um, altogether, they have 271 history of present illness. These are their diagnoses. So we're tracking some of the comorbidities as well. And so this is uh, for diabetes. All the variables are pretty much the same. We did it purposely so that for scanner project, it'll be, we can uh, streamline this much better. The only difference between hypertension and diabetes variable data sets were that in diabetes, we were able to add family history, hemoglobin A1C, which is a lab, um, and blood glucose. Some of the challenges that we face so far, initially, I think retrieving data was a little challenging because we didn't know who could pull the data and what particular data to pull. Now we have the IRB approval for the retrospective analysis part. We've um, been in dialogue with the IRB chair and we will be um, attempting to write another one for prospective um, uh, arm and just to see how we can do this prospectively. In terms of comparative group, I've already told you this is a challenge and we would love to hear your suggestions if you have any. And recruitment of sites, when we go to, we've started the dialogue with sites other than UCSD, and they would, um, the common question is, well, what can Scanner do for me? Even though we try to tell them, well, think about what you can do for Scanner and what Scanner can do for you. But they want to see the, the tangible, you know, because essentially we're going to them and asking them to donate data, but they can't really visualize this, so that's why I think I'm very excited about the next Park Hill Dish is going to give us a demonstration, and just so that they will be able to visualize it to see what we can do for them. And so finally, once we get the data in Excel file, how can we present this in a nice dashboard or trend or um, pie chart so that the clinicians would actually have the buy-in and in real time prospectively be able to um, analyze the data for them. So thank you for your attention and Kiltish. Right. Any questions for Grace first? I do want to recognize our um, collaborators. So our core team meets on a weekly basis. We do have site collaborators with pharmacists who work as a liaison with their physician um, partners at their clinics. We are research assistants and students. They help us pull some of the data manually when we have to do comparisons. And of course, uh, we're very grateful to the infrastructure support team who are um, on call on a 911 or PRM basis. <laughs> Was there? the sites that are making an investment and participating in Scanner. And uh, I found it to be quite different with community clinics and academic centers. And it seems as if the community clinics are, have, a lot of, uh, have a lot of interest in getting things like quality reporting measures that are not necessarily the main <coughs> point of any of our studies, but could easily be calculated with the data that we're collecting. Have you, have you had any dialogues with the clinics you're working with along those lines? I don't think we have gotten to the, the, the part about how the data are going to look like because at this point they're still trying to visualize and I think basically they're, um, they're keen to this idea but they're really having a hard time trying to figure out what this can help them with. So for example, in San Diego area in terms of this MTM approach, um, UCSD is the only site that's doing it. So the other sites are very interested in knowing how their pharmacists could get involved. And so our, their benefit of joining this is actually something in addition to having the data um, in a nice visual um, sense to pull the data, I think for them is, um, uh, some of them, is to give them a head start so that they can launch their pharmacist and physician collaborative management um, protocols at their site. Um, and so having this opportunity helps them this way. I'm very hopeful that once we show them that visual, they'll be able to um, get more, we can get more traction. And at this time also, I think we're facing some of, uh, you have one nice um, slide where you said uh, some of your s s sites actually did not want to put data directly, but they pull the data for you to then use. I think we've encountered this as well. So one site here locally um, wanted to have their programmer um, pull the data and then uh, come to our server. And so that's something that we have to work with them. That means that they would have to do more work to get that, to get the data. 
Hi, Michael Negretti with the Pharmacy Foundation. Thank you, Dr. Quo. Um, I noticed uh, some of your data elements. You had medication lists. Are those just pulled directly out of Epic? Yes. And what are you seeing as far as the accuracy and completeness of those lists? Mm. I think there's probably one or two um, places. And, and the programmers were very nice and um, having, so I requested to have not just the medication name, dose, direction, frequency, and so forth, but also to come down to three different levels. So for example, metformin, they're able to say metformin 500 milligrams by mouth two times a day, but they are also able to, in a separate column, tell us that this is the endocrine and metabolic drug. Um, it's an anti-diabetic and also a big one. So there are three larger, medium, and uh, small levels so that uh, we can actually go down to that um, granular level to do analysis. So this is pretty accurate. Now, there may be a few, and I just I noticed that when I was putting this together, that the um, atenolol, uh, for example, cardiovascular agent, but then it says beta blocker and beta blocker again. So this could be antihypertensive. So there are a few of those that we have to go back and fine tune. Otherwise, it's pretty accurate. I was more curious as to are all the, as the pharmacists sit down with these patients, are they finding that everything that they're actually taking is in the EPIC system, including herbals and OTCs and things of that nature? For the most part, I think the patients that, are see that have been seeing the pharmacy, or pharmacist, the pharmacy student or resident are pretty good in their complete list of medications. But overall, for our um, physician-only uh, patients or the usual patients from my other projects on medication reconciliation actually shows a discrepancy between 40 to 60 percent. Last question. One of the big things, and if you're going to try to measure outcomes and impact, is adherence. And I know that was one of the things on your list that you couldn't get to at the patient self-report. Um, what are your thoughts or what are your efforts in trying to get a handle on adherence, at least looking at medication possession ratios, working with pharmacies or health plans to get that data? Wonderful. So I think challenges can be turned into opportunities, and so we're very excited about that. Even though for our current clinical trials, a lot of that data are captured on paper, and we don't have any intention of wanting to go back and recapture that you know, on the electronic medical record, but our clinical trial data and some of these data that show um, our interest in adherence on the medication changes and so forth, Forth, we will be able to do this as we go uh, prospectively. So we have worked with our EPIC team in the pharmacy, ep the pharmacy EPIC team who are willing to write this, and now they have more knowledge and skills to write not just the smart text, but smart data elements. So in the future, we have to request specifically for the smart data elements so that we can pull in the back end. And so I'm hopeful in a year we will be able to make that happen. Thank you.